Hey guys, so as you can see, I'm in Hollywood at the Man's Chinese Theater around a bunch of tourists. Check them out. They're going crazy with all the stars and all of the, if you can just see it right here, all of the famous uh, handprints from God knows who. You know, I live here in Hollywood and I never even come to this joint. But I thought it was pretty cool to maybe just do a video about stress. So if you can imagine, <laughs> this is pretty stressful, right? I'm in the middle of all these people, and if you actually check out the different body sizes and shapes, you can see that your body is a reflection of your mind. If you don't believe me, look at some of the people behind me. Yes? So kids can start off being um, with a high metabolism, and as you get older, we become metabolically damaged. So 90% of us, at least in the United States, are metabolically damaged to some varying degree. True. True that. So, uh, here's some more. <laughs> I love to be distracted. I know you guys hate it, but you know. What do I gotta say? So basically, um, I want people not to give up. So I'm doing a video series on not to give up on ketosis. And um, so I've been ketosis in ketosis for almost five years. It's four years in counting. At the age of 46, of course I say it all the time, and I can't show you the business because, well, there's too much business going on behind me. But that's okay, I digress. Here we go. Back to my shades. All right, so like I said before, people come in different shapes and sizes. And having a nice body with, check out homie right here. So, <laughs> Somebody help me! So, but see, we can't see what his body's like because he's covered in armor. Hold this for a second. What was that? Hold it for a second. Okay, I'm holding this for a second. As I'm doing a video about defining your body. Okay, so as I was saying before, yeah. everybody expresses their genetic potential very differently. Correct. Yes. So it's not about your genes. A lot of people think that having a nice body is about your genes, but it's really about how you express your genetics. That's called epigenetics. I agree. As I'm still holding the lifesaver here. Right? Yeah. Bink, 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 bink. This is what Darth Vader looks like. Okay, let's see what Darth Vader looks like outside of his costume. Who's amazing? Hold on, hold this. Okay, so this is Darth Vader. Can you see that? Wait, wait, wait. Check out that physique, right? Yeah. So Darth Vader has expressed his genetic potential. Don't, now, tell, don't tell too many people. I promise. Just only a few. Just a few. So I would say that because he's black, people would say, oh, well, that's just African <laughs> genetics. True to a small extent. But really, it's about how he expressed his own genetic potential, which is quite amazing. This is 10 years. Now, is this a current picture? Yes, this was like two weeks ago. See, so that's amazing. So he, he looks like he's about 5% body fat. Six and a half to be exact. Six and a half. Actually... Six and a half works. So, so that's amazing. Thank how? Thank you so much, Darth no Vader. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if Darth Vader can do it, why can't you? Exactly. That's what I'm trying to tell people. Let them know. I will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> so, that was a perfect example about genetic potentiality. So, I've got all different ages, ethnic groups. Families, old, young, you name it, all in this part of the world in Hollywood at Man's Chinese Theater. Yes, the famous Man's Chinese Theater where a lot of famous people put their handprints on the ground and have stars somewhere along here. But anyway, I digress. I want to get back to our genetic potential. The reason why I don't want people to get up, give up on keto is because if you actually do adapt, you guys, if you do adapt, it's it's going to be the best darn thing you've ever, no, I'm going to say, it's going to be the best damn thing you've ever done. Because now you've stopped inundating your body with all 
of that glucose. That's what we don't want. We don't want a lot of glucose. Why? Well, some people uh, email me, mostly guys who are very young, going, oh, I do so well on carbs. And I'm like, that's great, you know, because you can actually, some people have very efficient fat cells. And so when the carbohydrate goes into the cell, you can release it back out as energy that you can use through your system, your Krebs cycle. I digress. I was saying I digress. <laughs> okay, so um, back to the crowds of people. Yeah? All of different backgrounds, which I love to show because it couldn't be more of a perfect place to talk about genetic potential. Why some people are overweight and why some people are thin eating the exact same food. Well, some of that's genetics, but a lot of it can be small things like how much one person gets sleep as opposed to another. How many calories are you actually taking in? Even though in the ketogenic diet where you eat high fat, it's not about calories. It's about your metabolism. It's about your hormones. It's about your age. It's about your gender. It's about your fitness level. That's what matters. A lot of people are like, Stephanie, give me a guide to how many macros I need to take to get into a state of ketosis. And I, and I say, I can't. I do the 80 15 5 rule just to get you adapted. Because once you're, if you drive your fats real high, fats, healthy fats are great for you. Your brain has to choose between the two fuel sources. And we want, oh, I've got fire engine going by. You guys don't mind, right? I always do long videos, so who cares? So basically, um, uh, you want to drive your fats high to get the brain to not think it's starving. Because even if you cut out your carbohydrates and eat high fat, it takes a while for your body to break down the units of fat called ketones to be able to fuel what? Your fledgling brain. Your brain is so used to glucose, it doesn't want to choose glucose in the beginning. It really does not. And that is the reason why... Different body types, different body types, expression, expression. Okay, so that is the reason why we want our fats really high. People have this concept that fat is, is going to make you fat, but they don't actually realize that we have insulin receptor sites on our fat cells, and we don't have an insulin receptor site for fat because fat has a glycemic index of zero, and that means that that insulin receptor site that's a hand that pulls the glucose out of the blood and into the fat cell, well, fat doesn't have that effect. So now you're not getting fat by itself. Now, if you put butter on bread, oh, whole nother story. Because now that fat probably has a pretty darn good vehicle to get into the to the fat cell via that insulin receptor site that you ate with the bread portion of your lunch, not the butter, not butter by itself. So I often say to people, if you have a stick of butter, yeah, let's go to other other people for a minute. Give my little shoulder rest. So if you um if you have a stick of butter as opposed to a um, loaf of bread, you're probably going to gain five pounds partially of water and a little bit of body fat within a day. Now, if you eat butter, you gain no water and you gain no weight because fat is a dense molecule and it takes a long time to break down. You know, you've got to have your gallbladder detergent it down. You've got to have, it's got to go through your stomach, your small intestine before it hits your blood and then it's got to make it to the cell and it doesn't have an insulin receptor site because there's no glucose. How's that for a bit of knowledge? So you guys, 80, 15, 5, 15% 15 protein because it no longer takes a lot of protein to do a big job. So you can get muscular and you can have the business and yes, you get strong as a friggin' ox. It's so lovely to, to after coach because obviously I'm doing keto coaching. I've been doing this for five years and there wasn't a lot of information in the beginning. So I've been sitting along the lines, uh, I would, you would say that I'm the scientist in the field because I go to the people and I talk to the people. That's what I do. Probably not to that guy. Where is he? Where's the guy in the megaphone? Okay. So basically, if I walk a little backwards, I'll probably get knocked over if I try to do that. But basically, so you want 15% protein and you, you want 15% protein because like I said, it
it doesn't take a lot of protein to do a big job. People have this concept that if they eat a ton of, a ton of protein, their muscles are going to grow. Not true. Actually, your body can only synthesize and metabolize a certain percentage of protein every time you even eat. So there's been studies that say that your body can only utilize a certain amount of amino acids from protein every four hours, and what cannot be utilized gets excreted or, or converted back into sugar via, via gluconeogenesis. So really, and some people say every, say every two hours. But really, if you're chronically eating a lot of protein, thinking that you're going to make big muscles, you're actually going to make big fat cells. Because what? Protein converts back, right back into sugar, just like table sugar, just like honey, just like a Snickers bar or candy. That's what protein can do. So, one, we want to keep protein moderate because it'll reconvert back into sugar. And two, because your body can't synthesize that many amino acids anyway. I mean, we're not freaking that kind of a machine. I mean, we're pretty machine-like, but, I mean, our hunter-gatherers didn't sit like this all day long, like, oh, 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 protein. Okay, okay, more protein. Okay, another shake. Shake, protein, blah, blah, blah. They didn't do that, and they actually didn't eat all the time as well. So, people say to actually fix the thyroid, you should not eat, or the leptin actually. You should not eat for four hours. But, yes, that is true unless you're suffering from hypoglycemia, which a lot of these people are. And they're suffering from, from a lot of different metabolic disorder. So we don't want to put more stress on the thyroid. What if some of these people are skipping breakfast and drinking coffee? Well, then that rule of not eating wouldn't be good for that type of person and that type of metabolic disorder. So you actually have to heal all your systems before you go over two or three hours of not eating food. No, we shouldn't be eating every two hours. But if you're metabolically broken, you'll have to, or you'll suffer hypoglycemia. So I just want to get through these some of these questions and answers. 5% carbohydrate, because you can get 5%, 15 to 20 grams. Myself, I'm, what, a little 5'3", a little shorty. So at 5'3", I only need about 15 grams of carbohydrate a day. And you can even be taller, way taller. You can be 7 feet and do 15 carbs a day. But you've got to find, you guys got to find that sweet spot of protein, and you've got to have that sweet spot of carbohydrate. Well, how do you know? Well, basically, you, I'm like looking at some of these people, yeah? Let's do the man's Chinese theater. Basically, um, <laughs> basically, God, I'm so distracted, I love it. Basically, um, what your body cannot use, remember this. What your body cannot use will always be reconverted back into sugar. So we, we are going to use about 5% carbohydrate. We can use it. We can use the uh, prebiotic in the fiber. We could use the nutrient value in the, um, in the greens and the broccoli and the asparagus and whatnot. Uh, we can use the plant nutrients. So don't go to zero carbs. Some of you guys are trying to, to get into ketosis faster by going zero carb, which if you are metabolically broken or have a lot of cortisol, that will create an instant stress response. And now your body's starting to raise its own blood sugar levels. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> now your body's starting to raise its own blood sugar levels. 